Mm -hmm. Hopefully it doesn't crash again. <laughs> okay, here we are with another Saturday Night Live uh, Q&A. Uh, nobody uh, is scheduled for today. Uh, we have, uh, we're in the month of December. We're already past one into the second week. And uh, lots of people are busy. We're in Mercury in retrograde, if anybody understands what's going on there. Facebook was acting really weird for the last few days, doing some strange things. Nothing is surprising when it's, uh, you understand the uh, energies of Mercury at play. We just love Mercury and thank it and elevate its soul for being there and giving us, in, giving us interesting times. <laughs> So uh, what do we have? We have uh, Willem and we have Jeffrey here. So um, yeah, it was, we were discussing a, a bit before uh, we were recording. I had a little crash here. Hopefully everything stables up. And this is nothing new and in Mercury in retrograde, you know, with computers crashing and stuff, nothing strange. <laughs> if you start having problems with your car, computers, any mechanical stuff, you take a look at the dates and see if you're in Mercury. More than likely you are. <laughs> it's uh, pretty interesting the way things happen for that. Uh, anybody else we have online here? Uh, Margaret, and uh, we have somebody on the phone. Hello, guys. Hello, hello. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, Lisa, sorry, I can't stay for meeting Plasma Love. Maybe I can come back. Okay, Lisa, I guess she's already gone. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were talking about uh, what is detoxification? Um, you know, what is, what is this word? Uh, I've, I've, I've been around the block on, on, in this, in this uh, alternative, I guess, what most people call a health ways <laughs> and really it's not alternative it's been around since the beginning of time you know fasting it just is <laughs> it's part of nature all animals do it when they're injured or sick um but what is detoxification it's an interesting question and if you ask a thousand people in in the health world you're going to get a thousand different answers and what is the correct one the correct one I think would be it's a lifestyle um, anything that is going to allow you to keep the body in a cleansing state continual so the body can find balance is is basically what detoxification is it's not a one time part-time thingy um, that, you know, you do a one-time fast for whatever days, 30, 40, 50 days, and you're done, and go back to your old ways. Every, every fast we do, we, we were going we're gonna to gain some benefit to certain degrees. Um, the biggest challenge is people coming off the fast, and we see it over and over. Going back to our old ways, you know, we've all done it. And, and the ones who say they haven't, they're probably uh, not telling the whole truth. But uh, it's a big challenge, you know, and living in a society that revolves around eating food. It's, it's everything, everywhere we go. You can't, you can't get away with it. It's just everywhere, you know. It's uh, like, uh, you know, I've been taking care of my mother for the last few months. It's, it's a big challenge, you know, being in in a state of mind with somebody who just has no interest in anything to do with this kind of lifestyle and it uh it's a it would be a real challenge for somebody who's trying to resolve some challenges they have um because um support is crucial um especially when you're not well support is really really crucial uh this is what our page is the main focus is is the support page um you know arguing about this that and the other thing i don't have time for that and 
I'm tired of it. I've done it for a long time and people have no interest in, they want to win debates. Okay, you're right. Move on with your life. I'm still fasting. <laughs> I don't need to argue with anybody. It's no point. It's no point. We need to have the understanding that um, the people that will want to do this kind of lifestyle, they, they just, they have a, an awakening, a, a revelation, an awareness comes that, uh, yeah, okay, this, this is something that I want to do. I want to, you know, um, make some changes because uh, what I'm doing, it's not working. And, you know, I'm not feeling great and having this, this and that, aches and pains, problems, can't sleep, whatever you want to call it, all these names they give it. So once we make that choice and that decision and there's an understanding, it's a lifestyle. And will we fall down? Yeah, we're going to fall down. But, um, you know, with the support, there's always that thing in the back of our heads. We got to get back. We got to get back on our feet. We got to get back on our feet. We got to continue because the ones who fall down and don't get up and go back to their ways, they, they're not around too much long. They, they, they'll they move on to the other realms really quickly. Um, disease is a state of being. It's a state of mind. We, uh, and health is also a state of being and a state of mind. So this is why detoxification for me is, uh, is a lifestyle. It's absolute lifestyle. Um, not to put uh, anybody down or anything, but going through courses and stuff and getting certificates is great is wonderful but has has no um benefit to really being able to help anybody properly uh unless you've done through, gone through the experiences yourself um it's it's just um you you you, you really have to have the experience and um Every, every, every day of a fast is a new experience. And uh, from what I've, the little I've gone through, it's, it's always full of surprises. <laughs> it's never boring. Fasting is never boring. <laughs> so, you know, when we make the choice to change our lifestyle, um, it's 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 just a an amazing thing to have a support system like we have on our Facebook club, Fiber Club. Um, when you're on your own, it's uh, it's it's uh, like I, I'm going through what I went through. <laughs> it was. Uh, a leap of faith because there was not much except what I've read, you know, and without the experience, you just, you, you, you have the mind playing games with you. You just don't know. You just don't know. So this is where people sharing their stories is so crucial and so important. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful, which allows people to connect with different experiences of different people something similar some resonance happening there it's a similar field strengths or whatever and uh, they can resonate you know not everybody's going to resonate with me ran or with whoever it is but there'll be somebody there that shares their story and you'll be able to resonate with and this is the beauty of sharing and, and having a support system but uh, once we make up our mind and we really have the understanding and then comes going through the process and living the experience and then you know once you start reading with the experience you'll get a new picture of what's going on uh within the body um things uh totally look different when you're actually doing it versus just reading it <laughs> And, and, and I'm sure a lot of you that have jumped in and started, you, you kind of understand what I'm saying. When you read it, before you ever experienced it, yeah, okay, whatever, yeah. 
sounds great, but once you're in, into it, experiencing it, and then you reread it, and then things come to light in a different, whole different way, and uh, uh, things are revealed to you because the answers are all within. It's, there's, you're not going to find any answers for me or anybody else. The answers are going to be found through your experience. This is the key. Oh, we have a few more people. Hey, Jonathan, Moon, Barbara. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just blabbing along. If you guys got questions, you know, this is the time. Let's have some chats here. But um, Yeah, I agree that, um, it's of course, the answers are always within. Um, it's good, though, to learn a little bit about cleansing. So going through the protocol um, and reading, you know, learning about the detox symptoms, because when you go through them, you don't want to panic. You, you want to understand what you're going through. And um, yeah. uh, that's where, where education and reading a little bit about cleansing and detoxing and learning the ins and outs of things because it's very different from anything you've ever done if you're new to fasting. And then you have the social aspect of the whole thing and uh, everything is going to be, can be very stressful or it can be nothing, you know. So it's all up to you how you see it. Yeah. So, you know. Some of us, you know, will we'll start eating fruit from, you know, coming from a sad diet or whatever diet, doesn't really matter. It's a diet of eating anything, you know, and that's not really so healthy. And we start eating fruit and some salads and we start getting through detox symptoms, just changing a little bit of their eating habits. But once you start getting to the realm of fasting, this is where real detoxification starts happening. Eating is eating. <laughs> it's not really detoxing. <laughs> it's, Especially dry fasting. And then, you know, you're going further and further with, uh, with detoxification, right? Yeah. Like, you know, the, more powerful. The, the eating the fruit, you know, it's, that's a given. So, you know, we enjoy once in a while when we choose to eat, you know, as we're uh, going into that. But um, the, the, the eating is becoming less and less attractive with every meal <laughs> as the years go by. It's getting, it's getting like, wow, man, what am, what am I doing eating anymore? <laughs> you know, we're, we're so addicted to the flavors and the taste is what I find. They're very mm. addictive. All these flavors and the taste. Yeah. And the aromas, the aromas are wonderful too. You, you know, especially when we're into fast, the aromas are so satisfying. This is where, you know, essential oils are just a beautiful blessing. Rose is one of my favorites. Well, depends aroma of what. I mean, <clears throat> if you smell deep fried food while you're fasting, that's <laughs> traumatic. <laughs> yeah, well, really... <laughs> that's, that's, that's but I'm, I'm talking about aromas in nature and wonderful stuff. And tea, like um, the, the kidney tea, when you smell that, that's yeah. It brings scary. you balance. You start breathing in the heavy oils being fried, man. It's not going to be a good environment for cleansing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah you know it's uh, it's interesting I, everybody uh, we all have different journeys and stuff um, and uh, we see so many people come and go it's just, just, just lifestyle is just not for most people it's very very few will, will actually stick to something like this for uh, any time um, even though they get better and, and they go back to their old ways, you know, and we have to always go, you know, why? Because the, uh, the, the seed of, of disease is the emotion. It's emotion. It, it's, it's comes and becomes clear and clear as each person goes through these cleanses, these, this massive fast, how powerful the intent and emotion is. And um, if we understand why do we get sick in the first place, whether it's conscious level or subconscious level, we're doing it on our own. There's nothing else that can do it for us and nothing else that can put us into a healthy state either. So once we come to realize that it's, we, are, we are the creator of this reality, of this physicality, then we can make the changes if we choose. And some of us won't, and some of us will decide to jump the fence, and it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. The soul is done. And it's time to move on. But, you know, we have to have the understanding that it's okay either way. Like with my mother, I, this is the choice that she wants to go, you know, doing what she's doing. She's not going to change. And it's okay. It's tough being, you know, my mother. But <laughs> you can't force people to make the change. That's the soul's experience. You have to support it. 
And it's tough. It's tough, guys. And, you know, this is the same thing when we're dealing with any other family members, friends, and whatever, acquaintances, coworkers, or whatever. But um, we, we just don't have that uh, whole understanding of why, who, where, when, whatever. It just is what it is. Is wrong or right? How do we? How can we judge that? You know, um, you know, in our eyes, you know, they're, they're, you're killing yourself. Well, are you? Well, this is what they're supposed to experience. I don't know. What do, what do I know? <laughs> what do I know? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, it's just maybe because we have been through both experiences and we have felt way better fasting than eating. Uh, that we were trying to help others, you know, but it's best, of course, to respect at the end of the day, other people's choices. And, uh, and, just, and that, if that's their belief system, that's fine. Of course, it's, you don't want them to, um, you know, if they believe that meat is good for them, then at least the, when they're eating it, the intent is that it's good for them. So we don't want to tell them, oh, it's bad for you. So every time they eat it, <laughs> They they feel bad and uh, it's gonna affect them, right? The intent yeah. is gonna be. Yeah, you know, we need to put good intent and emotion behind everything for other people. Um, it's it's tough. It's challenge um, because um, from what I've seen, you know, um, the eating is a huge factor in. Uh, and if we're in an imbalanced state or balanced state, um, I, I, I've shared before, I, I, I don't believe this, this physical body of ours is meant to eat physical foods, uh, this third, three dimension food, there's just no way. Yeah. It's yeah. Just <laughs> when you look at the miraculous design on the principle, same principles as how the universe works, the universe doesn't eat, doesn't poop, doesn't digest. <laughs> it, you know, we've all been duped. Whether we, people believe it or not, it's okay. It doesn't matter. We, 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 we need energy, not food. Um, but we're so conditioned, programmed. It's, it's not easy for us to make that change and that leap of faith and the jump or whatever. So we do it slowly and we support each other. And we can see that we can reduce ourselves slowly over time. Everybody will have their own pace. And it's okay. It doesn't matter. You know, some of us, a lot of us will keep eating till we, well, till we pass, but it's okay. But if you, if you have this consciousness of the less is more, you're going to be reducing and reducing. You're going to feel better and better because this physical food is only going to get in the way <laughs> of you feeling in a balanced state. It's, I haven't seen it do anything else. I don't care what you eat. You can be a fruitarian. You know, I've seen guys eating these crazy amounts of fruit. There's just no way I could ever do that. I never felt good. Didn't matter how clean I ate, I always looked forward to my next fast. Always. It was my reset. No matter how clean, 100% raw, you know, fruit and, you know, it didn't matter. It was, my body said it's time to fast because I used, used to and still maintain every season change those fasts and that was my focus. I mean, my body wanted that reset. It needed the break from eating. It's just the way it was for me. And uh, that's what's what uh, is the difference from understanding what detoxification is and not understanding, I believe. You have to have a, a love of fasting. It, it needs to be a part of you. Yes. And we, we have many forms that we can work with uh, within Master Fast. When, we're, when we go back to food, we, we really have to have that love of the dry fasting. Because if you go back to seven days, you're going to have problems. I can assure you. <laughs> I can assure you. And uh, you can talk to anybody who's tried after cleaning up their body uh, as we do on Master Fast. Because we're cleaning pretty deep, especially if you go a long one. If you've, you've gone like... 40, 50, 60 days or more, you're, 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 you're getting deep uh, in this cleanse, you know, if you see the stuff that comes out of us. But um, it's... Uh, yeah, the cravings come back definitely like crazy now. If, um, I see it, you know, uh, doing colonics very often on myself. And um, 
on other people, but uh, on myself, I do them very often. I can tell you that the more waste, the more cravings. And of course, um, the emotions are out of whack when you have lots of waste inside. And in my opinion, it has to do, everything is connected. I see it as an, the obstructions, the more waste, mm. the more bad parasites feeding on the waste, bad, good, it doesn't matter, parasites feeding on the waste. Yeah, forget about And this. these, yeah, I know, but uh, the parasites want to eat. It's not that you, your physical body wants to eat. They want to eat, they're feeding on the garbage inside. So as soon as you start having garbage, uh, and the worse you eat, the more the cravings, because the worse you eat, the more obstructive the food is. Uh, that's our definition of a you know clean versus not very clean food. The obstruction. This is what we look at when, uh, when clean food, like fruits, for example, are for us are the cleanest food, and these are the only foods that well, they're the foods that leave the least garbage behind. They leave garbage, but the least garbage behind. And so they move through you, so they leave the least waste. And so you have uh, less parasites living on that garbage, and you're gonna have less cravings. You're not gonna have intense cravings on food, no way, right? You're not going to. And when you have these parasites living in there, on the waste, then your um, emotions are out of whack as well. You become impatient. You want more food, you want more of the obstructive food, not just the, you know, not just food, but obstructive food. The more like it's, it becomes like a cycle, you know, and you become an addict again. You're yeah. not resetting your body, you're not cleaning, and you become like an addict again, just like before the fast. The more we eat, the more we want to eat, the more we drink, the more we want to drink. It's, it's that simple. Um, this is where we, we really need to focus on less is more and make it a part-time mm -hmm. thing you know yeah. once a week whatever uh you can get yeah. working with you um three day, three days a week of uh of not eating for me is uh is not enough i'm cutting to realize you need to uh need to step <laughs> up i need to step up <laughs> <laughs> It's um, it's interesting. It's interesting, but um, I can assure you, uh, you know, some of us, you know, are living with other family members and everything, and it's it's uh, it's a much much bigger challenge for anybody who's not on the same page when they're living with others. Um, if everybody was yeah, on the same much. page, or if you're on your own, it's it's like it's completely different, you know. Environment dictates outcome. It's going to affect you, and you need to be really strong if you have other people around you. You know, I go in my house. There's junk of all over the place of crap that I don't even want to see. <laughs> so, what do you do? What do you do? You need to be uh, be be sure of yourself and and focus on where you want to go because uh, you can't uh, you can't change anybody else. You can only do it for yourself. Um, so as we remove obstructions is what I found is the cravings get less and less and less. Mm -hmm. It's actually way easier than eating. Uh, so I wanted to tell you that well at the beginning, right? Um, before we started the video recording, um, that fasting is way easier than eating, way easier. There's no comparison. Not only that, but also... So less cravings, so you're not, you don't feel like an addict. Um, so you're free. You feel free for the first time in your life, right? And then the other thing is um, uh, you, you feel amazing. I mean, your joints, everything is way more flexible when you're fasting compared to when you're eating. And then the energy and then the creativity and then, you know, the productivity at work and different things. It's just so beautiful that you feel like it's, you know, I need to slow down. Otherwise, I might crash, you know, because I'm doing so much so you know, and I do go through that myself sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes I crash. But, um, but yeah, you keep going back up because you know the feeling. You know? Yeah, you you as the cleaner you get over time, over if you know a few years of doing this, you'll see that it doesn't matter what you eat, you 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 you, like you eat fruit, it's not going to be nowhere near as bad as if you go eat some rice or something. <laughs> but you're going to still feel fruit. You're going to still feel fruit. 
Mm-hmm. It's gonna slow you down for sure. It's 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 because our body is a being of light. It doesn't need this, you know, dense matter stuff to uh, be processed and to do use all that energy, excess energy. But um, it's okay to eat. There's nothing wrong. We're not telling anybody never to eat again. But you know, there there will be people that are moving into that direction that they're not going to eat anymore. Uh, humanity as a whole is moving in that direction. Will we see in our lifetime? I think so. I think we'll see a lot more. It's, it's mm. happening. Uh, more and more people are going that route of uh, getting away from me actually eating physical foods. Uh, a lot of them are going into just drinking fluids, and then very, very few are going into not drinking any fluids or eating anything at all. They're just living on the uh, air. Yeah. Now, I guarantee, I guarantee you, if most people have done 108 days, they will have a completely different belief system. Mm-hmm. If people who are living today because they will find things that they never thought were possible and one of them is that you don't need to eat and you have more energy when you don't eat and i mean and you feel amazing you don't feel sick you know i mean it's countless you know the the benefits so but they don't know so well, you know us sharing our experiences we're helping so many people but um it's not easy you know there are ups and downs you know it's not perfect uh, I see Britannianism as perfectionism, which I never thought is possible, but it is perfectionism in my eyes. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the ultimate. The relentless. It's another level. Suit, the pursuit for per- perfection. It's never ending. <laughs> yeah, but it's never ending, but it is like something else for us, you know. It's a very high level that it's almost like a- infinity. There's no end for infinity, you know, but it is almost perfections around yeah. yeah you know um there's a lot of groups focus on food and you'll see them in the hundreds of thousands of people um people are interested in eating they're not interested in not eating <laughs> it's, it's ever, all, about, all about food uh, it's, this is what the uh, focus is on life revolves around uh, food society uh, interactions food 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 <clears throat> but hopefully at least there are better choices because you don't definitely don't want to live on junk i mean there are people who grow up in, on junk food mm-hmm. and that is like i don't like it is yeah it, it is very abusive on the body it's it's yeah. just so we're, we're in a way we are uh, we are blessed you know um, but of course, as you eat cleaner and cleaner, you're really helping your body. I have Jeffrey here. I was watching a TV show, Dr. Chris, and he was walking at the Great Wall of China. And the host of the show said the mortar used for the bricks was made out of egg whites and white <laughs> rice blue. So can you imagine <laughs> that? Yeah. Uh, there's a bridge in Iran, my friend's Iranian, that is made with uh, eggs and... Uh, Wow. Uh, I can't remember. It's it's like hundreds of years old, and it's in the it's 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 in the water. And they just it's still you know perfectly <laughs> cars go over it and everything. So wow, you know yeah, you can make uh, pretty amazing glues with uh, some of the things <laughs> that we eat uh, as humans. Uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Just imagine that inside your gut doesn't want to leave you. Know? You know, it's, it's glued and silence. Yeah, and what does it take to get rid of it? This is a very little understanding of how much work it takes to get rid of it. It's a years, years. I've mentioned before, it took me well over five years to get rid of a, a really chronic mucus problem I had. Uh, I was always <clears throat> working all the time growing up. It, it took me uh, over five years of fasting raw foods to get rid of that. And um, it's just a relief. And then, I, and then I built it back up again, going on high fats. It was crazy. It was insane. It took me about a year and a half till I started getting the problem again on high fats. High fat raw vegan, no animal products. High fat raw vegan. I got, I got it back. And it wasn't nowhere near as bad, but I was getting it back. And it, was, uh, it wasn't pleasant to, uh, to have that. Um, but uh, it, takes, it takes work. It takes uh, a commitment and uh, patience. Yeah, a lot of a lot of patience 
Um, you know, I, I've said this already before we were recording, what else are you going to do? What else are you going to do? You're going to go through the system. You're going to go back to your old ways of eating. A lot of people who just, have, they're not slavery. around. Slavery. They're not around. They, they just, they, they, they jump the fence because it's, there's no answers in that system that we have out there. It's the same crap, all backed by the mighty dollar. It's sad, but this is uh, the reality of the uh, situation out there. You know, why, why is it so hard for us to go get support in the system out there? All we want to do is fast, eat clean, and not be junked up with drugs and all this stuff. Why is it so hard? It's, it's such a resistance from these conglomerates out there. Why? What, what, what's the problem? You know, it's way cheaper. So why don't they want us? Why don't they support us wanting to do that? Well, there's an agenda behind. It. It's simple. And, uh, yeah, that's for the. I would say the people in power have an agenda. Now the public, I would say, they don't have the belief system. Once they start finding out more and more, and then with the internet, and then um, I mean, we have access to information that our parents didn't have access to so we are very blessed to be you know to be here today you know um, the, so the information access to information and once you start living it your belief system will change it does take time this whole thing but uh, I, I say you know the people are you know they want the best for themselves they don't know they don't know how it feels too fast everybody wants the best and our program gets in the way of the mind. That's the mind, the luciferic intellect, I like to call it, uh, through our education system and so on and so forth. It's, uh, it's always in the way. And uh, it's not something that's simple to, uh, to change for some people. And it's a challenge. So um, there's always the uh, skepticism for anything that's in so-called natural because there's so much out there that's bull crap and you know it doesn't work you know so, uh, especially the supplement uh, industry vitamins minerals and all that stuff it's just another spiral to whatever <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just get caught in that stuff i got caught in it uh, you know spent a fortune going through that system um it's just crazy. Uh, there's just so much misinformation. You need to uh, siphon out uh, all the stuff and go deep within because that's where you're going to find your answers. Uh, going through your own experiences little by little, you know, feeling it out, seeing what you can do, and uh, have an understanding of what's happening. Yeah, things might be more confusing than ever today with all the information, but at the same time, we have more choices than ever. Yeah. So there's no more excuse to say, I don't know. You want to know? Go Google. You know, Google it, find out. Yeah. Keep uh, finding out, you know, keep learning. If you can't find the best detail, keep learn, keep reading until one day you're going to have raw food and then you're going to add fasting, you know. Slowly you're going to find more and more and more and more. But ask for help first, you know. First ask your God for help, you know. And then your, the answers will come to you. Go to the internet, you, you type something and it, it comes up, you know. So you have a choice. We have more choices than ever. Maybe we do have uh, more temptations, but who cares, you know? It's more fun to have temptations, I guess, because, because uh, it makes it more fun, I guess. <laughs> it makes the journey more fun. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, well, I'm, well, I'm, I said more challenge. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. It, it would be boring if there was no challenges, right? Exactly. <laughs> so the challenges are fun. Keeps it interesting, that's for sure. Just make sure you don't kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we 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 have a pretty good understanding of what happens during fast now. Not all the stuff we read about the science. That's all nonsense. <laughs> and they're, just they're just looking at limited windows in matter state they don't see what's happening at all the other levels um, 
it's, it's just, it's an infinite actually what's going on on all the other levels. We're interacting with so many energies. Um, just, you know, keto, keto and this and that and all that stuff. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's nonsense to me. But anyway, uh, at least they're looking into it and uh, trying to make sense of something. But uh, they all agree, if you look at the sciences and of all the studies that have done, reducing your food intake extends life expectancy. There's many studies that have done this, many. Is it a surprise? Not at all. all it's in every religion. All centurions, Depressed. all centurions are, sm are light, small eaters. There's no big eaters that live 100 years old or more. They all eat small amounts of food. All of them. Even, it doesn't matter what the foods are, it's the, the amount is more important. If there's, the people eat, like me, I, I, I had the problem, I was always an overeater. Always, large amounts of foods. Being Italian, you know, I would eat more than most people. <laughs> That's my challenge. But, um, you know, if, if we can um, train ourselves with less, we're going to feel better, mind's going to be sharper, we're going to live longer, just on that basis alone. And then we want to take it and expand it on that. We clean up what we eat. And we have a fasting regime. And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> By keeping fasting a lifestyle, like your daily, your weekly, you're going to eat less and less. You'd have no choice, but your body doesn't want, your stomach is smaller and doesn't want so much food. No, the but you're eating small. always. Stomach's not small, it goes back to where it's supposed to be. <laughs> we stretch <laughs> it out by eating. <laughs> <laughs> this is the misconception. Your stomach yeah. is only the size of your fist. That's it. Yeah. How many of us have eaten more than that at one meal? <laughs> I've eaten I'm 10 fists. <laughs> you know, go to an Italian wedding. You know, you're eating for hours, <laughs> or you know, get together in time, say whatever. It's 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 crazy. It's crazy. Oh, let me go to the bathroom so I can eat some more. <laughs> or the Roman times, they had the vomitoriums. They used to vomit. Oh my goodness! Parties and then go back and eat, because what what was what is it? It's the addiction of that taste. It's, yeah. that's, that's what, this is what we're all after. Once it goes into the stomach, that sensation, it's gone. And then we feel the heavy, the digest. It's the taste, of, it's the, the emotion of the flavor, the scent, the feeling. It's that emotion. That's what we're addicted to. But by, by going through that and swallowing it, we're, we're numbing ourselves out of the uh, the, uh, the 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 true emotions that come to the surface uh, when we're when we're fasting, locked up emotions is what uh, is what we all have challenges with, um, and uh, we need to realize this is uh, what trumps all intent and emotion, intent and emotion. Why do we want to keep getting giving ourselves these fixes? of eating all the time. <laughs> yeah, they're comfort for sure, you know. I mean, you grew up eating them, right? In a way, emotional comfort. Yeah. Especially the food that you grew up eating. Yeah, the motherly love comes through the, uh, the food that you grew up with. Food. It's that's, that's the biggest challenge for people. The flavors of the, the mother, uh, the food that your mother fed you or your, or your father, whatever, in your family, where you grew yeah. up. That food there would be the biggest challenge for people to give up. It's uh, the aromas. They're just, they're really drawing. Like even now with my mother, you know, right, try some of this. And it's like, <laughs> like a program. It's like you're automatically going to grab that food. No, no, no. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's very strange. Like it's, 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 it's truly a program. It's just, if you really step back and watch the sequences after these words go through you and what you're going through, it's just amazing. It's, uh, it's a program. Definitely a program. You know, you know, us Italians, there's just so much into the food and many other cultures in Europe and so on. Indians are very into the foods and Eastern Indians and 
many, many cultures. The it's Arabs, oh my goodness. Arabs and Greeks and, you know, mm. it's, uh, it's all about the food. <laughs> guys, anything you want to share? Yeah, guys, unmute yourself if you want. Jeffrey, we it's ate Chinese a, it's food a discussion. almost once a week growing up. Oh, well, yeah, I used to go. We used to go to bars, and then after that, we used to go to Chinese food or go to Italian places, Italian sandwiches, one or the other. We used to eat a lot of Chinese food <laughs> myself. <laughs> All that wonderful MSG before we knew what MSG was. Uh, <laughs> I was Gino. Wondering. Yeah. Gino, I, uh, <clears throat> when I was about 19 years old, I went out to dinner with my father one night. Uh -huh. My dad, to this day, owns an Italian restaurant. Yeah, and yeah. So you know. We went out to eat. I had done something wrong, so we went out to celebrate it for some reason. So we had twin big stuffed lobsters, and then we hit Friendly's. Friendly's is a, just an old school ice cream parlor up in New England. And they have this thing called the Jim Dandy. And it's five scoops of ice cream, two full bananas, and everything in like a gauntlet. <laughs> so, so we each get one, okay? And then he looks at me and he goes, you want to see how many we can eat? No. And the waitress comes, the waitress comes back over and she goes, uh, you guys all set? Can I get you anything else? And my dad goes, yeah, we'll take two more. And she goes, you're kidding, right? He says, no, we'll take two more. So I couldn't even finish my second, you know, uh, he finished, he probably had like three and a half. We end up going back to my grandmother's little trailer and both of us are like, you know, he's fired. It was unbelievable. It's amazing. <laughs> Two lobsters we, each? Yeah, that was after twin baked stuffed lobsters after dinner. Corn on the cob, baked potato, you know, it's sick. But I know what you mean with the yeah. food. And then yeah. I was thinking to your mother, like, Gino, try this. If you don't try that food, they take it as an insult. Yeah, it's you know? like I I hear I've, I've done stuff like what you're talking about. It's just just thinking back in those days. I don't know how how we did it. I don't know. I mean, you know, I think it was maybe about a year and a half ago. I was I was doing the Morse protocol and I was cooking at my dad's restaurant. And I remember him saying to me, "Why don't you be?" He he couldn't stand his kitchen manager. He said, "Why don't you be the kitchen manager?" And I said, "Dad, I, I don't want to eat this food." You know, and he still, you know, it's t to this day, he doesn't understand it. You know, that's why I'm away. But I got to do what I, what makes me feel good, you know? Yeah. yeah. Crazy. But yeah, like that. <laughs> we had crazy times eating crazy amounts of foods. It's just, I don't know how we survived, man. <laughs> I just don't understand. It's just, wow. Like when you, if, I think, I, I don't know, man. Italians are probably one of the tops of the amount of food. I've seen Greeks are pretty up there and you know, they, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and, and you talk about MSG, my grandmother used, used to use MSG and everything. So most of the recipes to this day at my father's restaurant still have MSG in it oh. because he doesn't, he, he won't even, you know, it's crazy. And these people are eating this food, but they're, you know, we're addicted to food anyway, but you throw MSG in there. It's like, whoa, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. And when you're clean, you feel it. Like when I was raw, I would go up, I would go home and I would, I would eat something and I'd have to go to the bathroom right away, you know? And when I started to sort of not, that didn't happen. I knew I, I was getting too, too crazy with it. You know, it's insanity. Yeah, it's uh, wow. Like at the Oriental stores, they sell out MSG. And one, one day, one day I was in the store, and this woman picks up this bag of MSG and puts it in her cart. I go, "You use that?" She goes, "Yeah, yeah." I go, "Do you know what that is? It's chemical." She goes, "Oh, just a little bit." I go, "Okay, mm -hmm. do your research." <laughs> just a little. Bit. That's like when when people say I only have a little bit of dairy to me or something. I say, "Well, I only smoke a little bit of crack." Yeah, like they don't get it. You know, oh, I don't have that much milk. I just have a little bit of my tea. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it's I've the same thing. Twenty years. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. It's uh, it's 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 a it's a tough thing to comprehend because so many people are doing it. It's the norm for everybody. It's just the norm. You know, it's um, everybody eats. Yeah, we're supposed to eat. Everybody eats all this other stuff. Yeah. And how come everybody eats and they're not sick? And I, I'm, I'm sick. Uh, hey, man. 
everybody's got a different journey and uh, we all react differently to different things don't worry about everybody else worry about yourself <laughs> you know if, if if your purpose is to eat and that's how you get your joy then you know you're not gonna enjoy yeah. your life <laughs> in my life and honestly I was just talking to my mother about this tonight my life at one point was that sad where the only time I would you know even be excited or, or somewhat happy was when it was dinner time yeah you know? Because it was it wasn't even me. It was those emotions. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's around us everywhere, and we got to deal with it. It's it's just the way it is, you know. Like I said, if, unless we get our own I island and go live, <laughs> yeah, I think we should have a we should put a vision board up for the for the whole whole group, and and someday we'll all meet on the island. Yeah, and then people will be begging to come to it. <laughs> 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 Our whole planet, <laughs> even better. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, we gotta have fun, man. It's uh, you know, we're all gonna we're all gonna indulge in a couple of things here and there, and we're gonna read a little bit here and there, but we need to set our feet firmly and and know our vision and our goal. That's it. Um, you know, let's just keep. Keep with our goals. And focus and drive to them. Doesn't matter. We fall off a little bit here and there. The biggest, biggest, biggest thing is after the long fast. We got to be really, really, really careful for a while. Uh, really, because the body's gone through so much, and it's the building stage coming out, and it happens for at least a couple times the length of the fast. So this is the part where. Uh, everybody has the challenge, and uh, we need to really, really be focused on that part. Um, it's very important, very important. Um, some people... The body is very sensitive. Yeah. The body is very sensitive, yeah. So you'll feel everything, and you, you will get depressed because you feel so bad. Yeah, I've seen some people blow up their legs like balloons, and oh, I mean... I did it. I did it. Yeah. I didn't even realize it. You know, I, I was, uh, I had gotten a, I, things were going awesome. And then when I broke my 61, I'm lucky that I have the organs I do, I guess, but there was like a salsa competition at the, at the place. And I made it with no intention of eating, but I had a little bit. So I was eating uh, tortilla chips and salsa and I've never had the, cankles in my life and i had i was so swollen it was unbelievable i was like oh man you know it's, it's crazy what happens when you get clean and you see what salt does and you see what all these things do to you it's crazy and how fast you can go right back into that too if you're not careful yeah you know well, we got to be careful it's very important um uh you know it's uh they're, they're, you know people have killed themselves eating uh, coming out of fast it's it's never the fast it's, people that died actual fast it's very rare and it's they've got they've put their body in such a state where it ain't coming back because it's just uh, but it's, and also you know i mean so many people don't fast properly they don't know what they're doing right yeah they don't you do the enemas the colonics they're, they're not cleaning they're not helping the body to you know especially the body stuff people coming from a very toxic state so. in, yeah, in this day and age the body's so obstructed um it, it's crazy not to use all the tools that we use we have available we have so many tools to support us like uh you know people are fasting without doing animals and stuff go for it man it's such a destructive hard uh, risky ride you know giving yourself an enema man it'll save lives they put a colon therapist in every hospital emergency. They're going to save so many lives. Just that one, one thing, just doing colonics yeah. and enemas. It's, it's, it's such, such a simple tool to uh, wash out the uh, obstructive uh, it's, it's crap we put in, in our bodies. But, um, yeah, it's usually the kidneys, where, you know, when people end up in emergency, uh, their bowels are blocked and then the kidneys get blocked and, and then they think they're having a heart attack or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Uh, you can't breathe. Do an enema and you can breathe again. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I've gone through several times like that. You barely can breathe. Go give yourself an enema and just, whoa. You know, colon's the third lung. is known as the third lung. Uh, just as the skin is the 
known as the third kidney. Um, everything's related. It's, and your second brain, right? The colon? Transverse colon, yeah. It's more brain in our gut than in our head. <laughs> but um, the spirit is not in the physical. The, uh, we hold, the, the soul sits within the brain, but it's, there's no physicality to it. It's an empty space. <clears throat> and uh, we can access that at any time we want. This is why we're here. We have access to it. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Anybody else? Come on, don't be shy. We got moon. <laughs> <laughs> I think my my questions will come when I start doing uh, uh, the actual fasting. Yeah. Right, right now, I'm just picking up information from everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, as, as we, we, we discussed, the experience is really where the awareness uh, opens up. Yeah. You feel it. And, and Start feeling it. It's like you guys said earlier, like you, don't, you can't really explain it to people until they do it. Yeah. And so I, I spent uh, five days with a couple of people last week just to introduce them to the fast. And the two of them are doing very well. But before the fast, they, they you know, couldn't really understand it right and now they're both like all in they love it you yeah. know yeah um it's just it's just amazing what happens and that's why i went back on it too because i felt like i was i was losing my um i was losing control you know over over everything and it was all yeah. based on food and junk you know yeah Crazy. it may take us several years but what else are you gonna do seriously what else are you gonna do it doesn't matter just we're we're constantly within the realm of keeping that fasting part of your life. That's it. You know, we fall off, get back in. Okay, let's get back in. You know, it, it, yeah. there's nothing else. You see, you, you see the light when you do, well, when you get in the master class, you see the light, you, you see an answer that you didn't know before. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter you fall, you don't fall. You know the answer. Food doesn't cut it. <laughs> the tastes are great. <laughs> Sensation. For me, for me personally too, I, I continue to learn because I always tell, I want to tell everybody everything and tell them what I'm doing and this, and it always gets me in trouble because so few people will ever do what we're doing. Yeah. And I'd like to tell everybody and it, all it does is, is it's like, you know, it's like getting a kidney punch every time I, I, you know, it's amazing. Cause I tell everybody, I'm like, no, help everybody. Everybody should do it. You know? Yeah. Um, I was like, but I gotta be, I gotta be more, you know, I, you know, you hate to be that way, but you have to be just to survive in, in some of the environments that we're put in. Yeah. You know? I, I, it's, it, when you're fasting, it's, it's best to remain silent. And, uh, you know, if there's some interest, true interest from people and you, you discuss it, but it's always best to be in silent. Um, you know, a lot of the spiritual teachers that fasted gurus, whatever from the past, they went into seclusion, you know, usually when they fasted on their own. Um, but, you know, for some of us, we got to work, we got to do this, we got to do that, and run a page. Interact. <laughs> yeah. You're your mother. <laughs> so we, we do the best we can in the situations we're in. And uh, this is where our support page is just, it's just vital. Uh, this was so needed that uh, I, I, I didn't see it anywhere out there, a proper support page. Um, and you know we've we've helped so many people uh, in in in, in uh, serious uh, situations where they just didn't know what to do. So um, you know this is the, the real purpose of what the page is there for. <clears throat> yeah. um, Moon, I saw your comment a little while ago about how do I ask questions on here? Just type. If you oh. hit your audio, you can talk if you want to, rather than type. Uh, you can unmute yourself. I can unmute you. Sorry. If you want. Nod your head, yeah, unmute. Okay. Uh, no, it's not working. Oh, here you go. You're doing it together. Okay, go, no, you're, uh, you're unmuted. Hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Hi, how are you? Oh, enjoying listening to you guys talk. I had a good laugh about the... Uh, Jonathan's uh, tortilla chip cankles. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, 
I have a question for you though, Gino. I'm having a healing reaction. Uh, it's been with me since day three. Uh, it's really persistent and I don't know what it is. Just kind of curious what's going on. Um, my armpit is like on fire. It's got this huge, it's like this big, this big rash, like right in the crease, wondering like, I'm thinking it could be acids, candida. Do you use uh, any underarm stuff? Used to, yep. When was the last time? Um, <laughs> the day before the fast. Okay. Uh, that stuff's all got to come out. Okay. So uh, you can use uh, clay packs. Mix your clay with some a little bit of charcoal. Okay. Put it on and you know just leave it for about an hour. It's going to be a bit of a pain because it's under the arm. I got stung by a jellyfish last day in Jamaica years ago. It was horrible. <laughs> but um, so uh, just uh, put it, you know, rest your arm on a table and keep it moist. Have a, a bottle of water, a spray bottle, and keep it moist and then rinse it off. Try and keep it about an hour and that'll help draw. Uh, you can also do castor oil packs. Uh, that may be easier, but the clay is really uh, drawing. Castor oil pack, you know, you can put the your flannel or cotton and then just put under the arm and just do that, uh, you know. So you're, uh, you're, you're doing lots of enemas, that's gonna help release or your kidneys filtering. Absolutely, both. Yeah, yeah it's just, uh, how, how long is it gonna be? I don't know, just keep doing it. Keep okay. adding, keep things moving, keep things flowing. Uh, as, as I keep saying, when you're in a fast, and uh, we see changes happening. All changes are good, even though they don't feel good. <laughs> this is what, you know, the healing reaction, why we call them healing reactions. The body's moving things. Good news, like pains will be from one area and they'll move to somewhere else. This is good. When a pain stays in one area and nothing's changing, that's a stagnant area. We need to move energy. So okay. this is one of the basic keys of fasting where I don't see an understanding out there. Change is good in a fast, when you're in a fast. So keep energies moving any which way we can with all the tools we have. Um, you can also, you know, massage it with the burn stick as well, uh, but just keep things moving. So you can do the clay, do the castor oil interchange, and do different things. I also, mm -hmm. sorry. I also love uh, turpentine if you can maybe mix it with a little bit of castor oil or on, on its own. I love turpentine on its own on my skin. Yeah. If, uh, if there's a rash or anything, I, I have it is amazing. Mixed with castor oil 50 50. I use it external. I, it's not part of the protocol, you know, internal stuff. People are using I've used it, um, you know, because of the reason what terps is. It's, it's just another uh, essential oil from a tree, Christmas tree. That's where they make it's it from. It's very. Oh, for, for any rashes. It's got to be, you can make sure it's a good source, 100% uh, uh, pure gum spirits. Um, and um, You know, I, um, I was in a lot of car accidents when I was younger, and I have a lot of, really lot of back pain, upper back, and it doesn't, you know, it's the left side. I don't even, I'm, I know I'm uh, more, like my right armpit um, sweats more because I know I have some blockages in there. And I've been doing the castor oil and all that, but it, it, can the castor oil and um, turpentine, turpentine help with, muscle, with soreness or any of that? Yeah, try it. Try it. Yeah. Ex me? External. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I was using a, a hand strength that I pulled a little bit. That's, uh, you know, you can use it anywhere externally. Um, I had, uh, uh, I, I was getting open sores in my nostril when I was doing the high fat thing and that stayed for me for like a couple of years after I stopped that. And I was using the castor oil with the terps on that. It really helped. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful herb. Uh, but we just got to be prudent when we're using these things. Everybody thinks more is better, you know. You don't need much, you know. I just mix mine 50-50 with the castor oil. And uh, you don't need much of it. Small amounts. Um, you know, there's so many things you can do. But... Um, also for that, uh, you know, massage, mm -hmm. massage the areas, you know, with the burn stick, mm -hmm. get energy moving. I do, I do the roller a lot. I do the roller a lot. Like I don't, I use the roller on my back constantly. Yeah. You know, the burnt roller, the wooden roller. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I use that. 
Um, but uh, I, I found uh, when you start getting into the really long ones, for the, the master fast, um, I, I found most people, once they start getting into those uh, uh, 60, 70, 80, 90 days, most people's pains, most, are gone, even though they've had them 10, 20 years. You got to get into those long, because <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, really deep, that stuff. And the body yeah. needs to do a lot of digging and cleaning. And once those obstructions start flowing out, the body heals it up. It's, uh, it's, it's very, very uh, simple, but we need to just stick with it. Um, you know, and if it doesn't go away in 108 days, you got to do another one. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> because you ask people, you know, from when they started, it, it, some people very quickly forget where they came from, how the pains that you don't have any longer, you quickly forget. Like you, when I have to think back of all the pains and this and that, I have, holy geez, man, I had this and that, and that. you know, they're all gone. It's, it's tough to remember when you have them. Yeah. Okay. They're there. But when you forget them, you don't even have them in your memory anymore. They're gone. <laughs> uh, man. I wish it was much easier folks. And it is. We stopped eating. <laughs> you know how much? Uh, headaches will save ourselves. We don't eat no more. <laughs> uh, but we're addicted to that flavor. Yeah. We have to uh, re uh, bring out the, the vomitorians again. The vomitorians, is that what they're called? Vomitorians? Uh, <laughs> the new style of vomitorians. <laughs> where, where they used to throw up, right? <laughs> Rehash it. <laughs> People love that. That's a good thing. Sorry, I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, they have a name for that, you know. People who do that. Bulimia. Yeah. Oh, bulimia. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't think you want to go there, but. Yeah. Well, now the <laughs> big, the big pharma, they have a name for everything, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So. Uh, they will make one up. Yeah. Rest, restless, restless leg syndrome. <laughs> the disease now right well i mean i was talking to someone on the group today about the dsm-5 and you watch commercials now if you watch that one i i started watching tv again which i fell away from and it was so horrible you know what's dsm-5 sorry it's the it's the diagnostics manual for basically all disease and things so if you're on a medication and and you complain about something else they check the dsm-5 to see if there's any you know, uh, dangers in mixing the two or whatever it may be. So I'll listen to a commercial and they're coming up with these titles that it's almost like they come up with the title because of a new medication that they created. Yeah. It has, you know, and then people go, Oh man, I, I think I have that. I used to do it, you know, years ago before I even discovered any of this stuff, I'd be, I was that guy watching late night TV <laughs> thinking, Geez, maybe I should try that. Or maybe, you know, and, and I, I always knew I, for some reason, I always thought I'd never be the one in the million that had any of those symptoms. But now when you listen to all those they say after the afterwards, the warnings, it's like, what? It's crazy. Goes on and, and on and on. Actually, yeah. And people will, will switch one symptom for another. It's, it's ridiculous. I you know? know exactly what you mean. It, it, this is how they, they, they program everybody. Oh, I have that. I need that drug. <laughs> and they go yeah. to their doctors and they actually ask for the drug by name. <laughs> yep. Yep. This is programming. And it works, so they wouldn't be spending the money on the on television or wherever else. Market, that's why marketing is so so uh, valuable. Yeah. It works. You know, and you may not even realize it. You know, I mean I, I'll even say to my mom, I say, Ma, you know, she'll be watching. Uh you cut out, Jonathan, you uh you, you muted yourself. You muted yourself. Jonathan. Sorry. Yeah, you muted yourself. We, we missed that. Yeah, no, one of the, Mike, one of the guys, the newbie, just called. I'll have to call him back after this. <laughs> See what's going on. But they, he had his, they had their first, like, uh, major releases this week and, you know, sent me pictures and stuff. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> you said something to your mother and then you cut out. She'd be watching the news, you know, and I'd say, Mom, you know, that's all 
that's all BS, right? And she says, yeah, I know, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't affect me. Mm -hmm. And that's what we all think. Yeah. But, you know, it's like when I was younger and I, you know, I'd be watching cops on TV and I used to get arrested. I don't watch, <laughs> I don't watch cops anymore and I don't get arrested anymore. You know, it's like, we, it's amazing. It's it, it, what you're, you know, if that, if that, those programs, whatever the TV is running in the background and you're listening to it, it's affecting you. Yeah. Yeah. It's affecting you. Yep. Um, I, I've seen it now taking care of my mother. She got the news on all day and all day. Like, oh. I never knew Toronto was this dangerous stabbings and shootings every day. Right. right. I had no idea. I felt great until I found out about what happened 3000 miles away, you know, which really doesn't affect me in my day to day, but they have to tell us, you know? And uh, it's funny, like I heard, uh, I was just, someone was talking about vision boards. And he said, um, he, he says to people that he talks to, he says, now, when you do your vision board, do you put things that you don't want on there? And people are like, no, why would I do that? And he says, then why do you talk to yourself? Why do you always talk to yourself about what you don't want? And I'm, 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 I've been guilty of that myself. Of course. We, you know, we have to actually catch ourselves to, to say what we want, not what we don't want. It's so many people. I'm from New England. And to me, New England is, number one, it's very, very um, medically dominated. And it's very expensive. So if you don't feel good, well, like my father, you don't have time for that. Go see the doctor, take a pill. What are you doing? You know, we don't have time to, you know, it's, it's amazing how, how people are so programmed to have all this stuff. And most of the people that I know are saving up all this money and working their, you know, what's off so that when they retire, they can enjoy it. And how many people in today's day and age actually get to enjoy that money that they've been saving their whole life? Not much. You know? It's, and, they, and they die with a bucket list. If you die with a bucket list, I think you're a moron. <laughs> you know, I mean, it just doesn't, that's what we should be doing every day of our lives. If you know? You retire, we should be enjoying every moment. It doesn't matter what right. you do, just do something, keep busy. Retirement's a joke. <laughs> you know, what's retirement? That's, this is all a slave mentality, but uh, everything affects us. So we need to uh, limit or avoid uh, all this type of programming as much as we can because it does affect us. The key is to catch yourself when you're uh, having these thoughts of what you, you know, saying things that what you can't have or whatever. It's, the more you catch yourself, the more you're releasing yourself from the programming. And, and the more and more you catch yourself, you'll catch yourself more and more. And then you'll do it less and less and less. But we all, we all do it. And for me, myself, when I was on the fast the past time, I was so open to everything that I can pick up so much on people's negativity. I don't even have to hear them talk. You know, I know when somebody's, I can feel it. I know when there's someone that's bad or, you know, it's, it's amazing. You know? Yeah. You don't realize how much negativity is out there until you actually clean out a lot of the obstructions that you yourself have caused. And when you do it, it, it's almost scary because if you're not ready for it, you get hurt, you know, in another way. That's yeah. crazy. It's, it's amazing how much uh, an enema can relieve you of all this negative crap. <laughs> Sometimes I just, oh, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is, enema is the answer. <laughs> Flesh it out. <laughs> uh, yeah. What do you got here? Uh, Jeffrey, aspartame is worse. Still use here in the United States. Uh, you're referring to the MSG? Yeah, it's aspartame and all the other names they have. I don't know. All the, from what I understand, it's radioactive uh, back... Uh, uh, something radioactive that the uh, they make bacteria eat is how they make aspartame, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Their poop is the aspartame. Uh, Moon, how do I ask questions? Oh, okay, you're already there. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, this is uh, your time. I, I have a comment, if I may. Of course. Back to um, what you were saying about the enemas. Uh, before the fast, I'd never done one. Like I'm a total enema newbie and I can definitely vouch for that. Like you guys know a little bit about me and what I was going through before. Um, 
my whole life was negativity with the depression I was going through. Like, even though that's not who I am, you know, like I, I, I know that I'm a shining light. Like I, I know that I have this love for everything and everyone inside of me, but it wasn't showing. And since I've started, like just the enemas themselves is such a difference, such a major difference. I feel so good, so positive. I cry <laughs> every day just because it feels so good. Like, thank you so much for showing me this way of life. I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome that, uh, you know, um, like we said, when, once we go back on food, don't get discouraged. It, it'll be, a, it's kind of a shock when we go back to eating. And we, we have to have that understanding and, and we need to be patient through the balancing out phase because there'll be like, you, you eat a meal, even like fruit and you'll be completely drained. Whoa, 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 whoa. is this what eating's about? It'll be a wake up call. But it, and for some people, their digestion turns on really quick within a week or two. Some people may take a month or, or longer, you know, it's what's going on. And this is where, you know, um, seven days a week eating, forget it, <laughs> get it out of your consciousness. It doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> you need that plan of action after you're coming out. And one of the many options would be great to go into where you're eating part time, you're fat, dry fasting and so on and so forth. And then planning for your next, in another whatever months or year um so uh, it's uh it's just uh, a process that we need patience and have an understanding but um enemas are so important so important um even when you go back to food if you overeat relieve yourself empty out i'd rather do an enema than hold it in <laughs> you know sometimes you go to the bathroom and stuff but the transit time starts slowing down it, when you eat and if you overeat it'll slow down more and more so and then you start backing up and you start backing up and then this is where we start doing these fasts and is it possible all this crap's inside me yeah it's 30 feet long yeah <laughs> it could be all backed up it's, it's hard to imagine but yeah but it's not only the gi track it's the whole body's got little pieces of crap you know obstructions throughout everything so we're cleaning out everything not only the gi tract we're first the gi tract and then it starts pulling from every other orifice that's why it takes as, as much time as it takes to really clean a body it takes years it takes years like i said for my mucus problem well into the over five years before it finally cleared up and i could wake up in the mornings absolutely no mucus no crap in my eyes anymore wow <laughs> is it beautiful <laughs> but uh it takes what it takes it's just it's patience and understanding and, and, and it's a lifestyle it's a lifestyle uh that's why one thing for me was a blessing that uh the the thing that kicked in for me with arnold there it's teaching is if you have to have fast as part of your life <laughs> So I made that season change thing commitment early on. I missed very few in all these years. Uh, I missed a few, but very, very few. Um, and I just always had to do that. Uh, but um, the the, uh, the biggest revelation was uh, the dry fasting. Um, that uh, was a whole new thing. I, I never had understood really what it was. Um, until I read uh, Phil Knopf's book um, over four years ago now. And uh, now I understand it, 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 if you read between the lines in Eric's book, it's in there, uh, basically. Uh, he just put it a different way. You know, the less you drink, the more aggressive the fast. So I did things in the past to drink as least as possible, just not knowing what a dry fast was. And uh, it's... Uh, it's where everything really happens. <clears throat> but until we clean that GI tract, I've made posts about this. Until we clean that GI tract, the dry fast will only get you so far. Because when you go into dry and your GI tract is full of all this gunk, all the energy is going there. It's not going to do all the magic miracles. You'll get benefits always. But when you clean that GI tract, wow, then you, you light up. And you start accessing what I call the perfect blueprint. 
uh, of yourself. It's just the magic really starts happening when you do these long dry fasts. We don't do these in, in, inside of a master fast ever. Stick to the protocol. It's just too aggressive. But once we go back to eating, we bounced out for a couple of months. Then we focus on, on the season changes to go as long as we can on these dries. And we're no rush, but we're always, you know, pushing ourselves a little more, a little more, a little more, allowing ourselves to go further and further and using the tools to allow and help ourselves to expand the dry fast. We have, you know, the, the semi-dry, the, the, the tinctures and so on, you know, to help us go. And, and you, you'll be able to do it, you know. I've done, uh, I've done many, many over eight, nine, 10 days, 11, 12, 13. 13 was my longest. Um, anybody can do it. Um, and if you're in a great and natural environment, I can tell you and assure you, it's much easier than being in an environment where there's the opposite. <laughs> I was in Italy, in Italy doing my 12 days. It was much easier than my 13 days here was very rough. <laughs> very rough. <laughs> so. Um, so at the end of the day, it's all choice. What do we want? What do we want to do? And, but um, keep that in your minds when you in the master fast that um, to start playing with the long dry fast and uh, focus on that. But um, when you're in, the, in your master fast, you know, go for the, the, the weekly 24, the monthly, try to go for the three days. And if you dare go for a five days within the master fast on the season change, because you're going to fall into one if you're doing underneath, it's going to be really deep digging. Um, I, I did, I think I did uh, my, first, my 108 days, I did, uh, I don't remember if I ended with a five day or a three day, but I did a five day within somewhere. And uh, it was very, very deep. <laughs> Uh, it was very deep. Yeah. But I, uh, in Italy, I started my, I did 43 day mass fast when I was there. I started with 12 days dry. And in the 42 days, it was 26 dry. I'm not telling anybody it's not been doing this for at least two years to even attempt to do anything like that. It's, it's very, you dig very deep. And uh, if, if the body's not ready, it's still got obstructions, you will dry yourself out and get in trouble. You will. <laughs> We've seen it. This is why we rearranged the protocol and tightened it up a bit for newbies because um, I didn't realize uh, how obstructive people are, really are out there. So we need to wash things out, wash things out. Take a couple of years, take your time, and then you can start uh, allowing the body to go into longer, deeper ones. But uh, always have that in mind. <clears throat> have that in mind. And eventually, like uh, we, you know, I said, the dry fasting word, forget about dry, it's a lifestyle. And we, we occasionally choose to eat. That's the way we have to look at it. We're living on plasma, light, prana, use any name you like, because we are beings of light. So, you know, we're after energy exchange. And I'm not saying we need energy. That's even wrong as well. You know, oh, we, we can look at the energy, uh, the sun for energy. No, we don't need anything. We, we interchange with other beings our energy. It's a give and take. Always give first before we can receive. Without that give and take, nothing happens. In the universe, the basic principles of plasma is giving and taking. It's the basic principle of how the universe works. So when people are just, some people are just looking to take, you know, it's, they're not going to find their balance. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. The basic simple principles, you know, people sharing on the board, giving, helping others, that's giving. That's another form of, it's, there's many, many forms of giving. You know, it's energy. It's always have, we always have to have that energy exchange to keep things flowing beautifully. Um, so it's such a simple thing, guys. Um, you know, when we sun gaze, think about what we can give to the sun, not what we can take. Because once you give, you're, you'll be able to receive so much more. When you take, there's always a limit on how much you can take, how much you can eat. You're taking. You can only eat so much. <laughs> Some of us a little more than others, but... <laughs> 
There's only so much can fit in there. But when you give, you reopen up and everything, all the magic starts happening. I like to call it. You get into the beauty of uh, all these things. Um, Gino, I am. Um... <clears throat> I, I'm around a couple of people right now that are doing the isogenics. It's like a, it's just some program that some, some people came up with and it's about losing weight and doing all this other kind of stuff. They call it a fast. So like they basically have the smoothie. It's just a concoction that they make with all kinds of, to, of, uh, of, you know, pro, you know, all kinds of supplements and all kinds of junk. And so, he makes this protein shake and it's all protein men, especially it's all about the protein. It's all, about, it's all about our size and our muscle. And they're so hard to, you know, I have some friends that just eat so much protein. It's ridiculous. And, and, you, and you may, I'll never be able to, you know, until they, even if they get sick, they still won't get it, you know? Yeah. And so he makes this protein thing and, and he goes to the bathroom right away. And I, I look at the ingredients in the thing. The top ingredient is whey protein. And I'm thinking, how? And I'm, I'm, you know, slowly I'm giving him information and I'm showing him these different things. And he says, um, yeah, but you should see these guys. They look great. You know, if you saw them before. I said, Carlos, that's, that's how they look. You don't know how, if they're healthy. You don't know if they really, you know, they're just trying to sell a product. Yeah. But we're so, you know, men in general, you know, I, I'm about, I probably run normally maybe 165 now but no one would guess I'm 165. When you clean out that digestive tract, there's, some people, there's so much weight in there that doesn't even affect how you look externally. Exactly. You know? um, and there's, there's also a video that I wanna, I'm gonna post to the group hopefully pretty soon, but it's, it's an old study that they did in the 40s on eating less versus fasting. Yeah. When you eat less, you're more hungry. And, you know, cause I, and I did the Morse protocol too, and I know this. and so when you eat, you, you, you're starving. It's like going off the fast and having your first meal, like Rana was saying. And so this study actually shows that when you eat less, your body actually breaks down your muscle. Whereas if you fast, you won't, without eating, you won't lose as much muscle. And this is something that, it was a study done in the 40s. You know, but all of this stuff is so lost. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah well, the, the thing is, what were they eating? And uh, there's many things involved, but <clears throat> this is why people find it easier to fast and eat less. But, mm -hmm. you know, the key is to remove the obstructions. This is the key. Because once you remove those obstructions, the efficiency of the body goes up. And this is where most people have missed out there in the fasting world. You know, it's, it's getting rid of those obstructions. And it ain't a simple task with one or two fasts. It's years of process that working on that, years. Um, if you read Arnold Eric's book, um, he went on a, a, a two year time where he was doing only fruit and doing many fasts. And he was uh, in Italy drinking, uh, um, Italy doing, a, I don't know if it was a bike, bicycle tour or a walking tour with one of his friends. And they were on a fast and they broke their fast with some grape juice. And he released a whole bunch of crap and he was able to do uh, crazy exercises right after that <laughs> without getting tired because the obstructions got unlocked and the vitality, you're kicking in and, and able to uh, absorb endless amount of energy. There's no energy, you know, that we're taking in when we're eating. We're using energy to use, to digest this damn fruit. We're you, it's a lot of energy to digest fruit, a lot of energy. It's, 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 it's crazy amount of energy. You could power a house probably for a week from one digestion. <laughs> how much, how much energy the digestion takes. Like, you know, just think about our body moving around so many hours every day, daily in and day out. Where's all this energy coming from? It ain't from the food. It ain't from the food. Uh, so yeah, there's a whole different misunderstanding. Like so many bodybuilders drop dead, have no. so many diseases and this athletes dropping dead. It's, it's nothing to physical uh, performance and stuff. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a, has a small amount to do with health. Yeah. But not everything. So, you know, some people are just focused on the capabilities or how their muscles look and everything. Yeah. That's very small part. We need a lot. Well, and everyone, 
I'm sure you've dealt with this too. We're both fairly thin guys. People say, well, you don't need, they just look at how you look. We, we, we aren't even taught. We don't even think of internally really, you know, the way I was brought up, that's, geez, I don't know about that. That's what doctors, that's what doctors are for, you know, and, and I've always looked pretty good. So even though I, I grew up in my dad's restaurant, people would always say to me, oh, you're so lucky you can eat whatever you want. <laughs> it's always about the food. <laughs> and like, listen, it may not have shown in weight or acne for me, but I was a nut. I have stories like, you know, like Moon, you were saying about uh, the stuff you were talking about. Yeah, I know it. I know it very well yeah. because instead of sort of, you know, following my own truth in most of my life, I was led by, you know, I look at history now. You know, a lot of people look at, at history as being this great thing. But for me and my family and the business, that history would have just kept me stuck there, you know? And, and so many people uh, just do what they've been shown rather than finding out what's right for them or any of that stuff. It's just, it's just so eye opening to be on, to get into this. You know, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you put uh, anybody on a, you know, three, four day, five day fast, you know, I'm not, right away you start seeing the level of, uh, sorry, the state of the health that they're in very quickly. Uh, the more problems you have when you start your fast, the more you're plugged up, yeah. the more stuff will come to the surface. When you've been fast for a while, like three, four, five days a week, you shouldn't even, it didn't bother you. <laughs> you know, three, five day, five fat, dry fast, no big deal. But anybody who's plugged up and, oh man, you know, they start getting dizzy or this and that and pains. And right away, you see it very quickly. Uh, short fast. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, we can look in people's eyes. We know exactly what's going on in the body, how plugged up they are. That's, uh, I almost wish I didn't learn a little bit about iridology because I'm looking at everybody and I'm like, oh man, <laughs> you know, like every once in a while I go, you have, uh, do you have digestive issues? And they go, how did you know that? Yeah. You know, it's, it's almost, it's amazing how, how, yeah. how dead we all really are as far as feeling and emotion and all that kind of stuff, you know? <clears throat> it's, it's such a simple, accurate science, you know, we can see what's going on. Um, you know, okay, you know, you, everybody's backed up to a degree or another. And some are really, really serious backed up cases. And I'm seeing some young, you know, kids, they're backed up. Oh, my God. Just crazy. Crazy what's happening. But, hey, we're all here to learn. And uh, we'll keep going. <laughs> Enjoy the ride. <laughs> When it's time to jump the fence, like I said, I want to die healthy. <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> you know, there's no reason to die in pain and suffering and sick. As long as it's an old age, you know. You know, I know these. I know men who are joggers their whole life, and they they have that heart attack at 56. Yeah. You know, and they think, "Geez, he was in such great shape." Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of athletes who, you know, drop dead. It's, uh, it's just crazy. Many, many things. Uh, we don't have all the answers for everybody, but, you know, if we eat less, we're going to be better off. LMG. What's going on here? Yeah, the computer's acting weird. <laughs> I'm not going to try and play it. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, everything goes delayed, acts, acts really strange when you're in Mercury sometimes. It's just, you just have to ride it through. No big deal. Uh, LGM15, you have your mic open? You want to say something? Oh, you, okay, you're muted now. All right, guys. Gino, if I could say one thing, Moon, I was thinking of you with the with the armpit and all that. When I was on my last fast, I, I um, for a couple of days, I, I took a nap, and I literally woke up 
from the burning coming from my armpits because the just the acid's coming out. So for a couple of days, I just had to make sure I washed my my pits more and just kind of you know stayed fresh. But it's amazing what comes out of you on these things, you know, and the burning and the you know everyone's different. But yeah, I've always been a good sweater, thankfully. You know, working in the in the restaurant, being a cook in my twenties was probably my one saving grace. Because I used to drink heavy and I used to, you know, eat and, and that was the one thing I think that saved me because I was never regular my entire life till I was about 35 years old. And because I was thin, no one ever asked me about diet, no, anything. No one ever asked me about any of that stuff. And since I was a young, young kid, I always had issues with going to the bathroom, you know, maybe twice a week, three times. It was horrible. Wow. And it was never, no one ever brought up digestion, any of that stuff, you know? And when I switched to raw foods about six years ago, it was the first time where I actually started. I mean, what was coming out of me at that time? I was like, what? And this, you know, it was unbelievable. And, you know, that's what sort of woke me up to this. And then I went back to the old environment, you ate some of the old food, and then you realize about about the plateaus and I, uh, I don't even know how or why I, I ended up finding Morris and you guys, but until we clean out more, we're always going to reach those plateaus. You know, it, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And everybody wants to not be, not have to do these kind of things. I remember with all the, the diagnoses I had, I used to say, why me? Why do I have to deal with this and all that? You know, but um, now I'm thankful that I had to go through all of that. You know, because I never would have gotten to where I'm at now if I hadn't gone through what I did, you know, yeah. and I have no idea why I, I kept going as fast as I did, you know, without having any more major pain before I kept searching, you know, but I knew mentally that I didn't, I wasn't thinking right. I wasn't thinking clear, you know, yeah. so I, I mean, I love you guys, Gino and Rana, you guys are the best. I love, I love this process. And even now when this, when, when I, like I was talking to Moon earlier today and she made me laugh and cha- totally changed my mood. But just knowing MFS is such a relief because for so many years I searched the supplements, the this, the that, the natural, you know, all these different things. And just knowing now that we, what, what I know is such a relief because I know if I'm not feeling right, all I have to do is jump back on, Yeah, you know? And it's, a, it's, it's so much of a relief compared to most people out there that are always going to be searching, you know, oh, I'm, I'm doing the ketosis diet or I'm doing this or I'm doing that. They're always trying something new, you know. It's always revolving around food. <laughs> right. <laughs> most of them anyway. <laughs> you know the answer and that's, that's you know, priceless, really. It's uh, once you know the answer, even if you fall, you know yep. the answer. It's all up to you. You have the choice. You've done it before. You can do it again. You know. Um, it's interesting how you said that eating less is not as effective as um, making as fasting, right? Uh, for uh, what did you say? Uh, oh, for, for I'm gonna I'm gonna post it. But it's basically the study realized that if you limit your intake, your body actually burns muscle. Oh, yes, yes. Energy. Yeah. Whereas if you fast, you won't lose yeah. as much. It doesn't pull yeah. from your muscle. It's crazy. I mean, that's, of course, honestly, yeah. clean muscle, but. I don't care about science, you know. I don't care yeah, for the yeah, article, <laughs> but it's just an interesting, it's an interesting finding, you know. And right. I do agree with that. It is very difficult to eat little. But if you fast, you automatically eat less. less. Whether you like it or not, you cannot eat too much when you start, when you make fasting part of your lifestyle. And it's like, you know, Gino, I mean, is, uh-huh. Well, one of the points that he made, too, is that if you, if you eat less, you really just make yourself more hungry. Whereas if you fast, the first two or three days are bad, but yeah. after that, you're not hungry anymore. Whereas if you're still yeah. eating, you're still feeding, you, you know, like you were talking about earlier, you're still feeding all that stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. And um, I think it's also like... There's definitely a discipline if you want to make it a lifestyle, fasting a lifestyle, you know. Um, for example, I look at Gino. He keeps, you know, even, you know, if he falls off. For me, if I fall off, I fall off. But for him, when he falls off, it's, he's going back to his weekly 
three day drive, two to three day, I don't know, these days, three day drive fast. And it's just so beautiful to see how disciplined he is. So he cannot fall too much, you know, because Lana, he keeps I, resetting you're, his body. And I listened to your Zoom last week and, and it resonated with me when you were saying, if, if I'm the same way, if I do something bad, I'm not okay with it. You know what I mean? I yeah. beat myself up a little because bit before I feel depressed. Yeah, and you know, the breast. <laughs> even though I know not to eat these things, it's when I do it, I, you know, it's like, you know, it's these masochistic ways that we're used to do. Used yeah. To, you know? It's not easy. It's not easy to uh, fast eat, fast eat, fast eat. It's much easier to just fast. Right. Much easier to just fast. It's more disciplined to fast eat, fast eat, you know, make it a lifestyle. It is much easier to fast. You will feel better in every way. Yeah, it's um, yeah, um, yeah, definitely more disciplined. The first day you will, you will, the first day, two days, you know, you, you kind of, you know, you say, okay, I'm gonna like jump in freezing cold water. It's the same thing, right? But you feel good once you once you're in the water. But it's just you always have to take this like big, you know, uh, stepping out so your comfort zone, you know. Whereas when and you're it's fasting, that, and it's everything beginning. that we've listened to in the past coming up, thinking, "Geez, this isn't safe. This isn't that." I just, I just watched something where the the, the man was basically like, "Take a shit cold shower for thirty days in a row, just to change your mindset," because you know your brain is telling you not to do it, but it feels so good to do it, you know. It's and belief. eventually, you sort of break that programming. It's the belief for sure. Um, and uh, the the thing is also, you know, it's the um, cravings as well. Once you start eating, you have the cravings. And so it's a little bit hard to go back to the fast. Much easier when you're in the fast and you just keep going, you know. You don't yeah. have to go through the cravings at all. It's very tricky. <laughs> very tricky. After two and a, two plus, maybe two and a half years, it is very tricky to make it a lifestyle. And... Um, much easier to just fast. Right. But then you want to have the belief system that it, this is the way to go. You know? But even you, you know, the way you're doing, what are you doing? The, uh, you're doing the... Master fast you, weekly. Yeah, and so you one eat day a week. week. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you have, you know, you don't feel like you're missing out so much and at least you're, you're you know, you have that day to sort of deal with your emotions, you know? Yeah, Which yeah, ones yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm it's not great. there yet. You know, I, I want to make sure that I don't have any body pain and I want my eyes to be blue and then I'll do the, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. If you, if you can just fast, I mean, go for it. Uh, but if you, you're you ready to eat again, at least eat, eat less, I mean, less days, you know. Uh, right. So fast most of the time. It's, um, Massive Fast Weekly is amazing for showing you the difference between fasting and eating. Because right. you keep doing it, you know. And, and the cravings are not so bad. And you cannot eat too much. You cannot like you used to before, for example, like I used to before. I cannot eat too much and I, my body is very sensitive. So I, I'm listening to everything I'm eating, you know, I'm listening to my body. But um, I do have my, still my emotional imbalances, you know, and maybe like when was it last week? I, um, on, uh, on Sunday I ate. But I didn't enjoy my food. It wasn't my fruits and vegetables. It was like my dad left over stuff. And so I made something with them, right? And it was disgusting. <laughs> it was my only day of eating. You know, I made, I made food, but I didn't like it. And I'm like, I, I didn't enjoy that, you know? And then Monday, I decided to eat. Why? Because emotionally, I wasn't satisfied with my food. Yeah, and you were upset with yourself, too. Yeah. You know, for eating and something I, that you were going to like. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we eat more. And then, <laughs> so, I, so I kept eating more. <laughs> yeah, so I ate, uh, the, the past week I did eat. Uh, so I did not do master fast weekly, but it, it's, it's tricky. This is what I have to say. You know, I, yeah. I mean, if you're doing master fast weekly for a long time, you will be strong. But sometimes, uh, I mean, I have fallen off after 90 days. I have fallen off after 60 days on master fast mm -hmm. weekly. But now I'm looking at myself and I'm saying, okay, I'm looking at myself in the eye and I'm saying, who are you kidding? You know that eating is not the way. You know, this is what I said. Yeah. Who are you kidding? You've done it a hundred thousand times. You keep fasting and breaking and fasting and breaking. I mean, in an even routine, in a beautiful way, I feel amazing. Like it's really as deep 
feels as deep as the master class itself, you know, like full master class. But, but I say to myself, you know, I go for a colonic the day after I eat and I release and all, all that And stuff. that's almost, uh, uh, almost a, a secret weapon you have. So you're like, oh, your brain yes. probably sometimes says, you know what, I can eat this. Yeah. I'll just do a colonic tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, so it hurts me every time I do a colonic the day after I eat. Yep. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, is it worth it? Every time I do a colonic, I, I release all that food. And I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? I swear to God, I, I talk to myself like that. Yeah, like, well, why I, am I, I doing this? I think we all do, Rana, except for Gina. I, I, <laughs> it's crazy. You know, like I, I fast, I, I eat, and then I wash, and then I eat, and then I wash. Okay. Um, you know, thank God for the colonic that I can wash. But um, why am I doing this to myself? You know? Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's a human condition, right? At least and that's I what we're You know, we, we make ourselves suffer and we don't even need to. And Sundays, usually my eating days, I feel the whole day was wasted on preparing the food because I don't eat during the day. I don't, I mean, during the week, so I don't prepare my food. I don't, yeah. I don't waste time on that. So I feel like the whole day was wasted, either preparing or eating. And then I'm like... What did I do? And plus, your energy goes down when you eat. So everything is just so depressing. <laughs> so it really, like, you will see it. And it's a good place uh, to, um, it's a good place to learn, really. When you eat, when you, right. do, um, you enjoy your food. Right, right. If yeah, you're going to do it, you have to enjoy it rather than beat yourself up over it. It's going to be a lot better enjoy. in that sense. Yeah, but what, uh, <laughs> But what if you eat some the, a food that's not tasty after fasting for a whole week? <laughs> you know, on Sunday you eat something oh, yeah. that's not tasty, and then you're like, you know, oh, my Sunday is gone. Mangoes. You know, so you have to wait one more week. <laughs> yeah, it is not nice. I mean, if you have good foods with you all the time, you know, you know, in the tropics, then I, I would say it's worth it to eat the foods. I I really, listen. I'm amazed at all the like Canadians. There's so many Canadians in the group. I think they must, you guys must be special up there. But I, I'm in Georgia. I'm in Atlanta right now, and it snowed down here yesterday. Yeah, yeah I see. <laughs> My mother had the news on, <laughs> which, is a, which is a rarity. I passed a lot of cars yesterday driving. But I'm amazed that you guys can can function in that winter for so long. Like I moved away out of New England because I didn't. I, you know, it was so hard to to even just be raw up there you know yeah. just a different it's, it's really, it wasn't hard for me to do raw no you know, it's I mean, so hard when i did raw food it was so easy um it's more like a, it's more mindset are you ready for it there's no excuse yeah, 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 yeah. i heard many, I, like so, you know over the years when i was 100 percent raw everybody would be complaining the winter it was too cold they couldn't do it blah 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 yeah, yeah. I don't have any issues, but for the first two years, I did freeze. It took me right. two years really? to work. My body started, you know, working properly and stuff through the winters. Um, but yeah, you know, it's uh, it's a little bit uh, easier uh, if it's not uh, that cold. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, we can keep making excuses or we can keep focusing on our solutions, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah. yeah. What do you want and what don't you want? Right. You want to go towards what you want, not any of the other stuff. It could be it could be some challenging days, like when you're fasting through winters, you get really cold. You're going right. to have to use some tools. I, I would have a two hot water bottles in my bed just to keep me warm. I just couldn't warm up. You know, saunas, oh, this, that. But you have, to, you have to do it to get through it. Like you just, your, your whole core gets cold and you don't want to get there. So you're going to need to do things to keep yourself warm, warm baths, whatever. Uh, right. cold showers you, get, you don't get energy moving so you know but uh, hey I, I have more issues with the with the cold and heat in the summer when I am eating I have absolutely no issues I don't remember having issues when I'm fasting it's much nicer uh, to deal with temperature when you're fasting yeah uh, you know? yeah the Atlanta the Atlanta summer is pretty warm I like the sun I always have but the Atlanta summer was tough, but when I was on the fast early in the summer, I had a sweatshirt on. I was fine. All these other people walking around so inflamed, sweating, like, you know, yeah. it, was, it was crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah you can handle the weather much better when yeah. you're cleaned out. Uh, we can't hear you, Gino. You can't hear me? I got you. Now we can. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, uh, when you're cleaned out, the, the, the heat won't bother you as much, you know, and the, all the extreme weathers. I mean, the body works much more efficient, but it takes time. Uh, in the meantime, you know, uh, well, it's too cold now. I'll wait till the summer. And then the summer comes. Oh, the fruit's too good now. I'm going to wait till the winter. Right. And then the winter comes and I, oh, it's too cold. And it never happens. Do it next year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, now's a good time. It doesn't matter. Now's you know, time. I'm looking at this one in a it's better way. Now. I would rather fast. I, I, it's almost better if it's the first time and you're going to lose a lot of weight, whatever it is, to do it in the wintertime, in my opinion, now, because you can cover up and nobody knows. I have a decent frame. So no one, when I got down to 119, no one would have guessed it, Yeah. you know, because for one thing, they don't, everyone's so heavy now, they don't even realize it. But it's, uh, to me now, it's sort of good to do it at this time because I can wear a bunch of clothes and nobody even thinks otherwise, you know? Exactly. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what did I go down to when I did 108 days? I went down to, uh, I think it was 137 or eight. It was the lowest I ever been in many, 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 many years. And uh, I was going to yoga class three times a week. And then in my last two, three weeks, all of a sudden the yoga teacher goes, "Man, you lost a lot of weight." <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just noticed all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> but uh i went um now i went off the fast horribly but i was really really thin and of course i tell everybody what's going on so i i i was around these people that knew me and they were all of, of course worried about me and i went away after i stopped the fast i went away and i literally put on an, an absurd amount of weight i got back up to 170 gino in like eight weeks wow. and when i got back and this woman hadn't seen me for like like a month and she comes up to me in this little cafe and she goes, oh my God, John. She goes, I didn't even recognize you. You look great. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's so crazy how, how no. you know. Yeah, yeah but it's, uh, it's dangerous. You don't want to do that, right? Oh man. It's, uh, I don't lots, to... of, lots of uh, water retention. I had to, uh, I had to, you know, I had to learn. I had to do it for my, yeah. myself, you know? Yeah, as long as yeah, you take the responsibility for it, for sure, you know, you don't want to, um, yeah. Uh, whatever mistake I do, I always take the responsibility for it as well. You right. know, I'm responsible. I know the, the the right way to go, but you know sometimes we fall off. Yeah, you know some of us will go to skin and bones, and hey, it's just the journey that uh, needs to happen. Uh, we even, uh, as you as you continue over the years, you know you won't go down as right. uh, as, as as thin. Um, <clears throat> You know, well, I'm lucky that I, I, I'm somewhat in, I was somewhat into this before all of this too. And I used to look at, when I first went on raw foods, I didn't want to look too thin. And I, I did a lot of little, you know, I looked at the old averages and stuff. And I'm basically the average weight of a man in 1940 before all the junk and the steroids and all that kind of stuff, you know? So it gives me a little piece of, you know, a piece of mind. And I don't put any value on weight anymore. Yeah. I want to build. I want to, to build so that, I can hopefully influence some other men that, you know, you can actually build on a better foundation and, and long-term you're way better off, but it's going to take me time to do that. And I'm okay with that. You know? Yeah. You got to keep moving. You build muscle through movement, right? You don't build. Muscle right. Right. Through... And yeah, absolutely. Repetition. Yeah. So, you know, it's okay. Um, the, the averages today are everybody's inflamed and overweight pretty much. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, many Back times I broke my fat. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It is what it is. So, you know, it I'm, is um very interesting how yeah, when you when you break your fast the wrong way and you don't look good. You know you don't look good, you don't feel good, right? And everybody around you tells you you look amazing. Yeah. It's just um. <laughs> It's like, you have no idea what you're talking about. This is how I tell people, you know, when, some, if, when I eat something <clears throat> that I know is not best for me, and people tell me, oh, you look much better now. 
I'm yeah. like, you have no idea what you're talking about. This is how, and really, I don't care who they are. I tell them, you have no clue what you're saying. I understand you, what you're saying. And I look at them in the mirror and I say, oh, I look good because I'm more chubby or something. Right. But I don't feel good. So I'm lying to myself. And people are, have no clue what they're saying. You know, everybody, we're so programmed that we believe being chubby is a healthy look. Yep. And, and like Gino's point, in, a, in an Italian family, every Italian man I know has such swollen hands and fingers. And, and <laughs> my father just had his shoulder replaced. He had his knee done. He's, he's falling apart. I, you know, it's, it's, I shouldn't even have brought him up. But I look in his eyes now and he has, you know, he's, it's, it's, uh, he's getting so acidic. It's crazy, you know, but there's nothing I can do. And I, I have to be away from it and not even be around it. Cause I, I it, it only brings me down, you know, yeah, it's, cause it's, I hate to watch people suffer. Tough. It's tough. Very tough. But Hey, we love them. You know, we just love them. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we do our best. <laughs> I laughed Ron, when you were talking about your dad, when you said you were switching <laughs> schools and over the phone, he was like, okay, <laughs> and then when he saw you impressing the yelled at you, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but it is a process. Like my mother's been, was around me the first time I did it. And she was, she's like, John, you're losing too much weight, blah, 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 blah. This time around, she's not going to say a word. She knows. She understands it a little yeah, more. Now. You know, it's, it's a process. Yeah. Yeah, make it a lifestyle. Really, do your best to make it a lifestyle when you're done with this one. Yeah. yeah. Lots Absolutely. of fasting days. Eat, you know, a few days a week if you want. Absolutely. Well, I mean, honestly, the goal is to um, the goal is to open up uh, some sort of a business where I can still do what I know, which is serve people with food, but but raw and plant based. You know, so that I'm in the environment because it is so hard to. It's very hard. I've never been much of a homebody either. So it's hard for me to be in a city, especially in a Southern city where the Southern cuisine is probably the worst diet that you could imagine. It's all mac and cheese, barbecue, you know, heavy, heavy meats. Um, but I have to be in, I have to be in the environment. It's going to help me thrive. You know, I don't want to keep going back and forth. I want to keep growing. And you will one environment dictates outcome has a big influence on us yeah yeah for sure that's why so many have so many challenges and uh, uh, they just uh, they give in some people because it's just too overwhelming for them to be in those environments that are not supportive to what they want to do to find their healing and balance and it's just sad because it's not supportive out there it's not supportive so we, we support ourselves, or, or each other on here, on, on, on computers, right? On, on the internet. <clears throat> you gotta have this some support amazing, somewhere. Really. I, love, huh? I love this, this is amazing. I mean, I, I like to see more and everybody talking, you know, at the same time, I mean, that's, you know, everybody sharing, you know, talking, it's really nice. But just the Maybe, people, too. Um, it's so different, you know, the group, just the group alone. And you can, you can almost tell by the comments, the people that have actually done it or not, you know. Um, and it's, it's just amazing how much people care about each other. And I made close friends in this group who I consider family, you know. Um, and I've, I've been fortunate enough to have moved around a lot, even though I have that home base. And I'll walk away from from someone that I've been friends with my whole life. There are some people who, who just stay stuck in that whole, you know, they never grow, they never learn, and they're just stuck in that whole history of wherever it is where they're from things, you know? And it's just <laughs> such an advantage having this group. It's awesome. I just wish we were all in the same town. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a crazy party. You don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be out of control. <laughs> You'd be like, I saw Lana eat a piece of cheese. <laughs> oh, yeah, I imagine. <laughs> no, I don't do that. <laughs> but it would be nice. I'm sure I'd be seeing much more people. You know? I do already see some clients from the master class. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you know what? Nice I, got, I, just, I just caused two Southerners to do it. So, you know, maybe I can get a little window going down here. It'll be nice. Yeah, you know, when people are ready, yeah, we will come. 
That's the only people who come anyway. The other ones leave very quick. <laughs> you, need, you need to be ready to make changes. It's the only way it's going to happen. Nobody can force you or talk you into it. The light has to go on. Oh, yeah, this looks like something I need to do, and, and it'll, it'll happen. And uh, yeah, I'm going to try to learn from all this too. And, and in the future, when I start to rebuild and stuff, I'm not going to talk about this stuff. And if somebody asks me, I'm going to tell them, you know, people that want the information, I'll give it to them, but I can't, I'm so open with everything that it ends up hurting me. You and know, I gotta learn. Yeah. You know, you know what? Share. It's okay to share, mm. but that's it. That's right. It. right. Uh, this is what I do with all my clients. I've brought so many clients to the masterclass from here. Yeah. All my clients that come in, I talk to them about a clean diet and about the fast, if they, you know, the levels of cleansing. So the master yeah. fast is the only fast I recommend. And I tell them here, I'll send you information about the master yeah. fast by email, the website and all that. And, um, and some people will take it. And some people, most people will not do it. Most people are scared, you know, it's too much for them. So, but at least they clean up the diet a little bit. But that's all I can do. I do not care. I tell my clients, I don't care what you eat. All I do is share. It's up to you. You choose. Yeah. All I'm doing is sharing. I tell them, if I don't care what my sister eats, why would I care what you eat? <laughs> I tell them, if I don't care what my family eats, why would I care what you eat? You know, I love you. I love you all. But I, you know, I really don't care. You know? Right. It's your Jeffrey, choice. Jeffrey, you're ready, you're ready. People don't want to hear it. I've tried helping my family. It's a waste of time. Once my eye problem is fixed, I will show them. Eh, don't do it for them. Do it for yourself, uh, Jeffrey. Do it for yourself. But I also yeah, find, right. too, all the more the more they're used to this stuff, the more you're actually helping them without even knowing it. And a lot of people are actually doing a lot of the things that, that they've seen me do, but they may not admit it. You know, and my mother even said to me recently, she said, you know, John, you don't know how much you've affected – everybody in the family. Yeah. Uh, and they may not be ready to do what I do or have done, but it, it does slowly and gradually, they, they see it, you know, they oh, realize wow. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The energy, right? The energy. Once, uh, All of it. I mean, you know, old patterns I used to have. I, I went through some stuff this summer that if it was the past, I wouldn't be talking to anybody right now. I'd probably be sleeping, you know? And that's why I know I've, I've, I've already made a lot of changes. It's just a little more work to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah, my parents started eating much better, cutting out all the, I told them this stuff, absolutely, no, 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 no. You know, they cleaned up a lot. My dad actually gave up meat to, not long after I did in dairy, which was amazing. And he wow. After that, but he kept eating fish and all the other stuff, you know, pastas and this and that. But, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, you know, you do have an influence on people. It's the, they don't you know, pick it up. It's, 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 it, when you're talking about this thing, it's, it's a little bit of common sense, you know, you know, we're eating all this death, you know, what's it going to do? <laughs> it's going to affect us. You eat three meals a day, whatever, it's going to affect you. And it's, 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 there's no way it cannot affect you, putting stuff through your body every single day. Yeah, yeah. It's impossible it's not going to affect After you get into fasting, it's a, you're not going to be, you're not going to buy into this. It's nonsense. I mean, eating every day. It's, you're not going to buy into it. Mm -hmm. After you get into fasting, you'll be like, um, you can't convince me otherwise. It's the way. Right. Yeah. I feel sometimes I feel a little rude because people will be talking to me about something and I'm just like, I shut off. Like, you, you know, <laughs> just check this out, will you, please? But when people, some people never want to change. They just want to search for something, even though they will, may never even find it, you know? Most I don't know. People, it's most people I, I find are looking for that magic pill. Yeah. Instant yeah. gratification, instant relief, instant everything. That's what they're looking for. They're not going to find it in here because there yeah. is no such thing as that. So, and yeah. And these programs that these people set up, they're like, oh, look at him. This is perfect just because of the ease of it, you know? That day, we do what we can. You know, people want to get help, they're getting helped. We've seen massive metamorphosis of many people. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. Um, you got a few people that have done a couple of 108s and, you know, 
it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. We got, the, what are we, 90 something that have done 108? And in a, in a, in a, just a small handful have done a couple of them. I want to be 99. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. We don't know Keep who's going. out there doing it. Some people oh, just yeah, listen, If somebody's getting close and I'm getting close, I'm going to throw them off. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to be like, you, you know, you know what? Those symptoms are horrible. <laughs> Eat. <laughs> Some people don't let us melt 108. Oh, I just finished my 108. Who are you? <laughs> right. <laughs> With the, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, good. It's all good. Uh, you know, the more people share, the stronger everybody will get supporting you it just it just makes everything much stronger for everybody yeah. we're learning together yeah we're learning together for each other well guys i'm gonna run i have to use the restroom i'm not doing it on camera <laughs> it's uh yeah anyway it's yeah it's nine o'clock I'm, so I'm plugging in again i love you <laughs> we'll call it a night and uh, we'll see you guys on the page all right, bye. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, thanks, everybody. Love you. Thanks. Bye bye. Ciao, Love ciao. You. Thank you. See you next week or Wednesday around the page. Have a good one. Thanks, Gino. Good night. Bye. Good night.